Welcome to CalciEd and today we're looking at error checking methods that we can use when transmitting data. There's a lot of information here so check out in the description for a link to the specific time in the video you might be looking for and then we also have some exam questions at the end so you can check your knowledge and be super prepared. If you like this video or you would like to know when there are more videos arriving please like and subscribe and please feel free to leave comments below. So when we are transmitting data, there is a chance that an error can occur. And so we need to have an agreed upon error checking method between the sender and the receiver that allows the data to be checked for accuracy. And if it's not accurate, for the data to be resent. So first of all is the automatic repeat request. And how that works is that the sender will send the information, the data is sent across to the receiver. When the receiver receives the file, they will then give an acknowledgement to the sender and say, hey, that's great, I got all my data okay. Or if for some reason the data is incorrect, then they will send a message to say, no, that's wrong, can you please send it again? The data will then be sent again from the sender to the receiver. This request method is then repeated until the correct data is transmitted. Well, what happens then if there is no acknowledgement sent back? So the sender sends the data, but they don't hear anything back from the receiver. Well, that's when we start using a timeout. So the timeout is an agreed upon length of time that the sender will wait until they get an acknowledgement back from the receiver. They will then send that data again if the timeout time is reached and they will keep sending that until they receive an acknowledgement. So they will send it, wait for the timeout, send it again, wait for the timeout, send it again. And that is an automatic repeat request. So next is an echo check. So just think of what an echo means to you. If you say something and you hear it, echoed back to you it is coming back again. So the sender is sending the file, that's the original, but then a copy is echoed back to the sender. So the sender sends it, the receiver sends back a copy. That means the sender can then double check that this copy is correct and then send an acknowledgement and say, hey, yeah, this data is all good. This is not a very reliable method because the error could occur at any time. The sender could have sent the file and the receiver actually got an accurate file, but then the copy they sent back got corrupted or had an issue and the sender would receive thinking that it was incorrect. And also it doesn't really identify where the flaw happened at which time. Next up is our parity check. And the first thing to know is that there are two types of parity, an odd and even parity. And this is applied to bytes of data, and a byte is eight bits. So a way to think about how this might be used is with ASCII codes, which we'll be familiar with as the keyboard characters. And we have the seven bit ASCII, that is each a unique character. Let's look at the letter S, for example. This is the eight bit that you would find in an ASCII table, but actually only seven bits are making up the ASCII value. This last one, you'll see they're always zeros when you look in an ASCII table, um, and they're set to zero because that can then be used as a parity bit. So we have seven bits to make up the characters, and then a parity bit, which can also be set to either one or zero. And those one or zeros are based on odd and even parity. So there's two types of parity. An odd parity would have the number of true bits are odd, and an even parity would have the number of true bits as being even. So let's look at how that works as a process. So the parity would be agreed in advance between the senders as either an odd or an even parity. You would then count the number of true bits that are in the byte. So a true bit is a one. So here we have one, two, three, four true bits. So this byte already has four true bits. Then depending on whether it is an odd or an even, we would set the parity bit. So if this was an odd number, then we would set this to be a one 
because there's already one, two, three, four true bits. So if we, that's an even number, four true bits is even. So if you want odd parity, you're going to need to set the parity bit to be a one so that there's an odd number of true bits. There would be five true bits. But if you wanted an even parity, well, this already has an even number of true bits because four is an even number. So you would set the parity bit to be a zero. So there are some issues with parity bits by themselves. So look at this byte here. So this byte was sent using even parity. So one, two, three, okay? So there was an error in this transmission because there were only three bits which are showing as true, but it should be an even parity. So we should have an even number of true bits. Now, where is that error? Was it this bit, this bit, this bit? Which one of these bits had the error? Well, you cannot identify the exact location of the erroneous bit. You can't know exactly where it went wrong, and that's an issue. Now let's look at another one. So this next one has an odd parity. So was there an error when this one was transmitted? Well, let's look. So one, two, three, four, five. So there are five true bits here. That's an odd number, and it's odd parity. So you would say, hey, there's no error here. This must be good. But let's take a look at the original byte. So this is the original byte that was sent. This also has five true bits. Great. But actually, if you look more closely, this matches, this matches. Hold on a second. Actually, there's an error here because this has arrived as zero one when it should have been one zero. Um, and that's what happens when we call this transposed. So when two bits swap places, that's called transposed. And with parity bits, you can't identify if two characters or two bits, sorry, have swapped places. So that is another issue. Let's take a look at some parity bits here. We're going to complete the parity on each of them. So this is going to be an even parity. So let's see how well we've understood this and consider trying to calculate them yourself at home. So I'm going to count up the number of bits. So this has one, two true bits, which means it's already even and my parity bit would be a zero. This one also has two true bits, one, two, so again, I'm going to put a zero because it's already an even number. In this one, we have one, two, three. That's an odd number. So I need to put a one as my parity bit to make four true bits and an even number. We continue this. This one also has three true bits. So again, a one will make this into an even number. One, two, three. Again, another one. One, two, three, four. A zero. One, two already even, a zero. So that's the method in practice. We've sent the full characters of parity. So that was seven bytes that I just sent. Now what we can actually use to make more accuracy with our data transfer is we create what's called a parity byte. So for every seven bytes of data, we're gonna add an extra byte on the end down here. And the way that we calculate it is by going down the columns and counting up the number of true bits. So here I have one, two, three, four true bits. So I'm going to add a zero into this position here so it maintains an even number of parity. This only has one, so I'm going to put another one in there to make two. This only has one true bit going down the column, so again I'll put another one. Here we have two true bits. So we can have a zero because it's already even. One, two, three, four is already even. So again, we put a zero. This one only has one that's odd. So we need another one to make it into two, an even number. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is already an even number and would be a zero. So we can now also perform that calculation on our parity bits and we would come with a one, because we have one, two, three odd ones, and the last one would make it true. So now what we've created is this parity byte at the bottom, which would be sent with the seven bits. So now let's say that this data has now arrived, and I want to check if there were any errors. So of course I can do my standard checks going across, checking each individual one. So this is even, one, two. This is even, one, two. This is one, two, three, four, five. Oh, 
Hold on. There's an error in this one. Let's carry on. One, one, two, three, four. Got four. One, two, three, four. It's even. One, two, three, four, even. One, two, even. Okay, so we can see that we have an error here in this byte. But as we've mentioned, we can't identify where the error is. But now that we have our parity byte, we actually have a way to check and find out because the bottom will now have an error in it somewhere too. So if we look at these, one, two, three, four, that is even. One, two, it's even. One, two, it's even. One, two, it's even. One, two, three, four, even. One, two, three, oh, hold on. We've got three true bits and that's an odd number. So we can now identify there is an error in this column. Of course, that now makes for us a cross section, which means we can identify the exact point of the error. So the advantage is if we create a parity byte and we send it in blocks, so eight bytes are sent together in a block, it increases the accuracy of parity checks. Okay, so next is a check sum. When the data is sent, what's going to happen is the data is broken down into blocks and with these blocks are sent an additional checksum block. So a checksum is a calculation that is performed on the data and then is sent as a separate block with the data as a way to check the data that has arrived. So what happens is, first of all, the sender, before they transmit the data, will perform a checksum calculation. So they'll look at their, at their data, perform this calculation on the data, and create from it a checksum value. This checksum value will then be sent with the data to the receiver. So the receiver will receive those bytes and we'll also get the checksum, they will then recalculate the checksum using the same method and will compare it against the checksum value they've been sent. So they have their original checksum value, they recalculate based on the data they receive, and now they're going to match to those two values match each other. And if the two values are the same, then the data was transmitted correctly, but if there is difference, then there must have been an error in the transmission. Very similar to a check sum is a check digit. And that is also based on a calculation on the data. The check digit is an extra digit which is on the end of a code and that is a calculation based on those digits. You commonly see those on barcodes and they can use what is called like modulo 10 or modulo 13. Now I could go through the whole modulo 10 calculation with you, but in the examination, we have seen more that they will give you instructions on performing a specific check digit calculation. So here is a previous exam question, and we're going to go over that one specifically. So check digits are used to ensure the accuracy of input data. A seven digit code has an extra digit on the right called a check digit. That's this one here. The check digit is calculated as follows, and then they're going to give us a step of instructions. So we're going to go through those instructions one by one and perform it on the digit that we've been given. They say calculate the check digit from the following code number and show all your working. So the first step is each digit in the number is multiplied by the digit position. So we can see the digit positions up here and here's our number. So the first one would be number four in position one. So it is four times by one. Next is the number two. 2 is in the number 2 position, so it will be 2 times 2. This continues. We've got a 4 in the 3 position, 4 times 3. A 1 in the 4 position, 1 times 4. A 5 in the 5 position, 5 times 5. A 0 in the 6 position, so 0 times 6. And then a 8 in the 7th position, so 8 times 7. What are these three dots here? Well, that is position number eight, and position number eight does not have a digit yet. That's not an error that you've made as you've calculated. That's because the last digit, the extra digit on the right, is the check digit. So at the moment, this is blank because we're going to calculate it. So next it says the seven results are added together. So we're going to take all of these results and add them together. So here they are, all added together. And this makes a total of 105. So what happens next? This total is now divided by 11. 
So 105 divided by 11 is 9 with a remainder of 6. We've done an integer remainder because the next section says the remainder will give the check digit. If the remainder is equal to 10, the check digit is x. So our remainder is 6. That's not 10, so it's not an x. The check digit will be a 6. And then this will give us a view of what this whole number looks like, which is 4241508 and the check digit 6. But all you need to do is just put in check digit is equal to 6. So let's look at some other exam questions. You can pause the video here and try to answer this yourself and then come back and check the answers together. Errors can occur when data is transmitted, stored or entered into a system. Darius could use error detection methods to find whether errors occurred. One error detection method he could use is a checksum. Describe how a checksum detects an error. First of all, remember that a checksum was a calculation that was performed on the data and creates a checksum value, so that's our first item. The sender is going to perform this checksum calculation and make a checksum value. That value will then be transmitted alongside the data. The receiver receives that data and then performs the same calculation again to create a new checksum value. Those two checksum values are compared against each other and then if the value matches, it was transmitted correctly. If they do not, there must have been an error in the transmission and therefore the data would need to be sent again. So that's seven different parts of an answer for a five mark question. State three other error methods that Darius could use. So we've got four other ones we could actually include here that we've covered today. Those are check digit, echo check, automatic repeat request, and parity check. Parity checks can be used to check for errors during data transmission. One of the bytes has been transmitted incorrectly. State which byte was incorrectly transmitted. So the thing that we want to do here is go through each one of these bytes and check what their parity is. The question does not tell us whether it is odd or even, but we know that it can only be either odd or even. So if we go in and count one, two, three, four, five, so just count the true bits. So we've got odd, one, two, three, also odd, one, two, three, four, oh, even, that's not in pattern. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is odd. So three of these bytes are odd and one of them is even. So byte 3 is the odd one out and that must be the one that had the error in transmission. Well, how did we identify which one was incorrectly transmitted? Just to explain what we just did. So parity checks can only be either odd or even. State that. Let them know that you understand there's only two possible options. Three of the bytes have an odd number of true bits, and therefore the parity must be set to odd. This is, you know, powers of deduction. It can only be odd or even. Three of the bytes are odd, so it must be an odd parity. Byte three has an even number of true bits, and therefore an error must have occurred during transmission on byte number three. Process of elimination, break the steps down one by one, and make sure that you mention odd and even parity how many true bits there were, and which one didn't conform. So here's another parity question. Three binary values are tr transmitted with even parity. Complete the parity bit that would be added to each binary value. So we're using even. Let's count through one, two, three, four, five. We need a one. One, two, three, four. It's already even. It's a zero. One, two, three is odd. So we need a one. Easy. We've got that down. So. A number of errors occurred during data transmission. State why a parity check may not detect errors in transmission. So what was the problem that could happen? Remember that we use the parity byte to avoid this type of error because we can't identify the specific location of the error. So we could get a correct parity transmission when in actual fact two bits have swapped Places. So that is what this answer is looking for, that if two bits became transposed during transmission, there would still be an even number of true bits, but the data would be incorrect. Hopefully this explains for you really well the different errors that you might experience during transmission. Thank you very much for watching this video. We hope that it was helpful. And if you enjoyed the content and you want to see more, of course, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.